Hey, I'm Brian with HVAC School. And I'm Sal with Products by Pros from ProductsByPros.com. And you're from ProductsByPros.com? I actually came from the internet. You actually came from the internet? <laughs> wow. That's an amazing town. Like Wreck-It Ralph. <laughs> Sal, that's a, that Wreck-It Ralph breaks the internet. A Sal has a lot of talents. Uh, so today we're talking about the alloy braze rod from solder weld and we're going to talk about how it's a little different than alloy saw and then we're also going to show where you might want to use it at some specific applications now alloy braze that is different from alloy saw how okay so alloy saw is really designed for patching aluminum in a low temperature range which is very practical in the field when we're working with really thin aluminum. It comes with an external flux, which allows you to use as much flux as you need, which is great for dirty conditions, those sorts of things. And it's my preferable uh, product for those types of applications. Do you have to use an external flux for the alloy braze? With alloy braze, the flux is internal to the rod, um, and, it's, and it's properly measured for the amount of rod that you have, but you don't have excess flux. So if you need more flux because you're working with dirty metal or if you maybe you did it the first time and you didn't quite get it right and you need more flux, then you would have to use the flux that comes with alloy saw to add a little bit more uh, in order to finish the job. But the particular application for alloy braze is going to be when you're working with thicker aluminum and you want a really strong surface bond. Um, specifically, let's say if you were working with a aluminum uh, mount or something for a refrigeration condenser or some aluminum channel or framing that you wanted to join together. This really gives you a joint that's up, it's, it's at the same scale as an aluminum weld. You know, if you were doing aluminum welding with say a TIG weld or something like that, of course that's going to be, you know, the best way. But for us in the field, we don't typically have that equipment. And so if you need to bond together an aluminum frame or make a repair to thicker aluminum, then alloy braze is what you want to use. Now, is it similar to other flux cord rods out there? Basically, if I see another flux cord rod on the shelf, could I use this instead of that? Uh, you can. It's, it's a slightly different product, so it's not really designed to flow into the joint as much as some of the other products that you've seen. Um, it is more like, almost like a weld, and so it makes a very, very strong bond, which is great for, you know, if you are making a butt joint or something, or if you're connecting some, uh, some maybe some square channel together or some L channel or something like that, it's going to be much better option for that type of application. Um, if you're fitting tubing into tubing, then a more traditional flowing solder works great, and actually Al Cop Braze um, by Solder Weld is a great option for that. Um, this is a little different. It uses a similar technique to alloy saw where you kind of apply the heat straight to it. You're not so much working around it mm -hmm. like you do with other solders. You're really kind of applying the heat straight to it and you're just sort of flattening that rod into the surface and it makes a really strong edge bond. But you do have to take into consideration the melting temperature of the base metal you're working with. You do, you do. And you know, obviously, you know, aluminum is generally going to be, you know, or just over 1200 degrees is where aluminum starts to melt. This, the working temperature of this is 1000, 1100 degrees in that range, which means that you've really got to watch where you're applying your heat. You want to put your heat right on where you want to melt the rod and you want to work it in as you go. It's more, it's, it's much more similar to a welding technique. If you've ever done oxyacetylene welding, maybe you've done stick welding, it's more similar to that where you're working where you're working and you're kind of working down the line rather than with solder where we heat up the entire material and then we draw it into the joint. It. Um, so it has a very specific advantage in that it gives you a really strong weld-like bond. It's very, very strong. The downside is, is that you've got to be really careful with your heat. That's with alloy braze. With alloy saw, that's a lower temperature rod. It's going to be a similar technique to what we use with alloy braze, um, but that's really the best product out there for patching aluminum coils. Got it. So in summary, working with thicker metal, need to make a really strong bond and maybe you're not fitting joints into joints, alloy braze is the way to go. If you're working with patching a coil where the aluminum is thin or maybe a U-bend or something, then alloy saw is the only product I would use. All right, so now let's do a demonstration. Yes. So to start with, we're going to heat up the base material. The flux will, uh, will come out of the rod. It will coat the, uh, coat the surface. And then I'm going to just make a, basically a, a butt weld or a butt solder joint here to here. And then we're going to use the leverage of these plates and pull it apart after thermal cycling and see what we get.
So I'm trying to draw it into the joint as much as possible. You can see the flux is running. It looks like it's drawn in there. All right, so I applied a pretty ridiculous amount of material in that just to try to draw as much in as I possibly could to the inside of this. So I'm gonna let it sit a little bit and then I'm gonna thermal cycle it, which again, for the strongest joints, you wouldn't thermal cycle, but we're trying to demonstrate the thermal cycling that we're gonna see in a system as you change from higher temperature to lower temperature. So we're gonna let this sit for you know two minutes or so, then I'm gonna thermal cycle it into this bucket of water and we'll see how it holds up. So you could hear that was very, very hot when I dunked it. Which again, it's better to, better to wait for it to cool down, but we know practically in the field, a lot of technicians are gonna rush it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and test this, and show you how strong it is. You can see that even though with this product, I don't pull as much into the joint, it's not like I pulled a lot of solder in, just the, just the butt connection on that solder is extremely strong with the alloy braze. And again, I would use this specifically when you're working with thicker plate aluminum, not necessarily when patching a coil. For that application, I would definitely use alloy sol. So this demonstration has been about how to use the alloy braze product to work with thicker aluminum in order to get a really, really strong, almost weld-like bond. I'm Brian with HVAC School. And I'm Sal with Products by Pros. Thanks for watching. Thank you.